And so the whole key becomes, how can I turn this thing that we call chalk and talk, or whatever, into something that grabs you and pulls you in and forces you to pay attention to it. That's what a good educator has to do. They have to be able to, 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 to uh, um, 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 accelerate, to be able to exemplify, to be able to, to, to pull you in and to force you to actively structure what it is that you're receiving. In other words, to think about it, not just memorize it, right? In high school, what did you learn to do? Memorize. That's not learning, okay? Learning is something different, and that's Dewey's fourth category. Education is not memorization. It has never been memorization. If it was, it would just be custom. Memorization is done. When you get to college, you are not memorizing. When you get to college, you are engaged in the process of continual growth. And that's Dewey's fourth category. You're not learning by memorizing. You are learning by doing. You are learning by engaging in the process. And that's what a bad teacher doesn't do. A bad teacher stands up and goes, one, blah, two, blah, three, blah. Any questions? A good teacher goes, one, blah. Is this true? Do you agree with this? Does this matter to you? Does this match with your experience? Does, if you believe this, what are the consequences of this? What about the counter-argument to this position? Think critically about it. Think speculatively about it. Think about how this matches up with other parts of your experience. Think about it in terms of your college experience as a whole. Here's a stupid question for you. How many people are taking a sociology class? How many people are taking an education class or half? How many people are taking psychology? Which one is right? <laughs> it's a stupid question, isn't it? Why? <coughs> Why? Why is it a dumb question? You laughed. Because they're all right. They're just different perspectives. They're different ways of looking at the world. And that's what you're doing when you're take, when you are getting a college education, is that you are cultivating the ability to look at the world from different perspectives. And that's what a good teacher does, is they help you do that. But it's a very personal experience. It's something that you have to throw out. It's something, it takes a risk. And it takes certain talents and it takes certain commitments. First and foremost, you've got to put passion into this. You've got to care about it. I don't care if you're teaching second grade mathematics or if you're teaching uh, philosophy in college. You've got to be passionate about your discipline, and you've got to think that it matters. And you've got to have the speculative ability as a teacher to make sure that you can connect what your students are learning in their third grade mathematics classroom with what they're learning in their third grade science classroom. You ever heard this story about John Dewey? You ever heard John Dewey's laboratory school? You've heard of it, right? You know how John, the curriculum in John Dewey's laboratory school was set up? You're not going to believe this. You know what the fourth grade curriculum was? They did the school finances. <laughs> they did the taxes. They balanced the books. That was their curriculum. The first graders recreated every year, recreated Phoenician society. They did weavings. They grew food. They, re they recreated the boats. They did all the stuff because they were the newcomers. They were like the basic ones. By the time you got to fifth and sixth grade, what were you doing? You were doing, uh, 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 you were running the kitchens. You were in charge of ordering the food. You were in charge of doing that stuff. Now, what do you have to know? To be able to do that sort of stuff, you've got to know mathematics, and you've got to know long division, and you've got to know that stuff. But how are you going to teach it? Look at how John Dewey thought. He goes, I can teach this two ways. I can say, okay, here's how we add two plus two equals four, and he questions little Johnny, right? Or you can say, we usually go through four uh, boxes of Pop-Tarts. Sorry, I'm eating Pop-Tarts lately. We go through four boxes of Pop-Tarts every morning. We've only got two. How many more do you think we need for tomorrow morning? Well, now, which one? Which 
form of addition, which form of teaching addition is going to stick? The abstract way where you just do it where it has nothing to do with the kid's reality and where they drag themselves home, do their homework, and then go out to play? Or the type of homework where they are actually engaged in the process? Well, obviously the one where they're, where they're engaged in the process. And it's where the teacher functions not as an expert, but as a guide. And that's a, the big difference. Look, it comes down to this. A bad teacher is a babysitter and a bad one. A good teacher is somebody that functions as a guide, that brings all of these curricular activities together, that, that helps the student understand how they hang together in a cohesive whole. The great teacher, now I'm not saying I'm a great teacher, but the great teacher is someone that takes it to the next level. And the great teacher is somebody that takes their obligations as a professional seriously.